everybody, welcome to Set Free. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, I don't even know what to do with myself. Three weeks in a row, I'm not up here presenting the message to you guys. That's just kind of like, holy cow. But I will be back next week to present the message with you all. As you know, we're starting a new series called Walking with God. Who here doesn't want to walk with God, right? Come on, that's the best companion we could ever have, right? All right. So that I'm Jennifer Felix, pastor over the care ministries here at Crossroads. I'm going to go ahead and read what is, uh, here we go. First off, who is set free? Set free is a healing and recovery ministry that exists to provide a space for individuals who are overwhelmed by any form of mental health challenge and or addiction in order to experience freedom in Christ and discover a new way of life. This is a safe place for you to grow in your faith and connect with others. We believe that healing and recovery both take place through your relationship with God and connecting with others in the context of shared experiences. Our promise to every person who seeks help here at Set Free is that he or she, that would mean you, will receive hope, encouragement, love, and prayer. Personal growth, however, is a process and not a destination and will always be based upon one's willingness, that's your willingness, to do all that is suggested. We do encourage sponsorship and the working of the 12 steps. If you would like more information regarding how to obtain a sponsor, work the 12 steps, whatever that looks like, would be more than happy to have a conversation with you or grab one of the leaders that we have here at Set Free. They are very well equipped to be able to answer those questions. Second off one to read is what is anxiety? Anxiety is your body's natural response to stress. It is a feeling of fear or apprehension about what's to come, such as the first day of school, going to a job interview, or giving a speech. Things such as these may cause most people to feel nervous or anxious. However, if, you are feeling, if your feelings of anxiety are heightened and or interfering in your life in any way, then Set Free is definitely a place for you as well. We, hear, we are here for you and are here to provide you the same hope, encouragement, love, and prayer as well. You are not separate from, but you are a part of our ministry family, and we welcome you here. I had the opportunity of meeting Ron a couple years ago, and we have been uh, just working in the context of ministry with one another for the last, what, two plus years now. And it is always an honor to get to do ministry with various individuals. And Ron is an incredible person that I respect, and I believe he has much wisdom to embark and to share with all of you. So what he's going to do is he's going to present a message, and then he's going to open it up for question and answer time. He is a licensed marriage family therapist and specializes in trauma and has a lot of experience in this field. So I would highly encourage everybody to take advantage of what it is he's providing for you all here this evening. But if you would all please welcome up Ron Hall. It is all yours. All right. Thank you very much. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hey, good to see you all tonight. Hi, my name is Ron, and I have a new life in a relationship with Christ as I continue to struggle through an ongoing chronic condition of dealing with perfectionism, anxiety management with bouts of depression that I attempt to keep in a manageable state and a lifelong worry of a dad who had dementia and hopefully he doesn't hit me someday. So that's who I am, and it's glad to be with you. I feel part of the, part of the fellowship here. Um, I've been in recovery, gosh, I can't count how many years. I've been through the 12 steps just about three times now. And uh, I had the privilege of working with a recovery community at a church called uh, One and All Church, a sister congregation of this church in San Dimas. So it's great to be here. As you can tell, I gave you a confession tonight. I have struggled in my life. Anyone else here struggle in their life? Okay, we're all in good company here. I have, an own, I have ongoing struggles, and sometimes I feel helpless. Anyone else here tonight? I think that's all of us, isn't it? And uh, I not only have past and present struggles, but future worries that can distract me. And uh, anyone else here tonight? So it really includes all of us. We're all in good company here, aren't we? So um, uh, my question I want to contemplate tonight, uh, have us all contemplate tonight, is it possible for one to walk with God through ongoing personal struggles? It could be addiction, it could be mental illness, it could be trauma, it could be chronic pain. If so, if, you, if it's possible, how do you get through all that? And that's what I kind of want, that's what I want to address tonight. So I've got some notes I want to share with you, and then I'm going to open it up for anybody who has questions. 
I've been a, a mental health professional now for probably, oh goodness, well, as you can tell, I'm three quarters dead. And, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time. I was licensed in the last century, so that's how old that I am. So, uh, and uh, I, I love what I do, folks. I absolutely love what I do. And um, I am the equivalent of Jennifer at One and All Church in San Dimas. I'm the care pastor there. And uh, also have the privilege of here of overseeing uh, our, our being one of your clinical supervisors for your professional counseling ministries here. So, and I've been doing that for, I can't count the years now, it's been quite a few. And actually my history goes back and I was telling Jennifer that uh, uh, I work for one and all, but I was ordained here back in 1984. Any of you know who Chuck Boer is? Anybody know who Chuck Boer is? Chuck and I went to high school together. I still think of Pam as Pam Dugan. <laughs> Pam is her maiden name. She lived down the street from me growing up. We were all trained at Crossroads when they were in another facility down on Main Street back in the 70s. So we've been around for a long time, and I still live here in Corona. So I'm still a long-term Corona resident. So let me, uh, contemplating this question tonight, is it possible for one to walk with God through ongoing personal struggles? I want to make four assumptions as we kick this off tonight. Assumption number one. Where God gives me power, I have responsibility. Where God does not give me power, I need to give it to him through prayer and faith. Kind of sounds like the serenity prayer. Do you ever hear that before? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. difference. Right on. And uh, so that's assumption number one. I am responsible for God gives me power to go about changing my life. I'm going to talk about that more in just a minute. And then the rest, give it to him. God's got us. Assumption number two, struggle is a part of human existence. Every individual that's ever lived, including all the individuals in Scripture, have struggled in their life in their life. Struggle's a part of human existence. I think all of us can agree tonight that struggle has, is in every part of our life. Just by what you said tonight and what I've said tonight, that is very true. And if you don't think that's true, can you think of any individual, any individual in scripture that didn't struggle? Anybody? Can you think of anybody? There, there, there really isn't that I could think of. Even Jesus struggled, and we know his story. Assumption number three, God is available to assist us in every personal struggle, every personal struggle. And that's a challenge. If you think that's not true, I would say find an exception to that. Is, that, is, that, is, is God not there in every personal struggle? Uh, if we, the only condition is if we accept God's offer of assistance. Now, I've had times in my life when I've said, oh, I, you know, when I've been depressed or it's kind of like, no, I don't feel like reaching out or something like that. It's really hard to get God's assistance when I'm not reaching out for it. And, um, and if we continue to uh, not address personal sin, sin is just a Greek word for means miss the bullseye. And if we're moving toward the bullseye, we call it, uh, Paul talked about the sanctification process, moving toward what God wants us to do. And uh, I don't know about you, but I haven't made it yet. And it seems like if this is the bullseye and, and I hit the mark out here with a part of my life, and then it seems like I, hopefully the pattern will move in, but my pattern goes like this, you know, and through life, and I'm, I hope to hit the bullseye in, uh, in most parts of my life, but I don't think I'm going to make it this side of heaven. So that's assumption number three. God is available to assist us in every personal struggle if we reach out to him. It's kind of like if you've ever reached out for help or you've reached out for a personal counselor, for a professional counselor, a life coach, we have to reach out to them. And if we reach out, the other person's going to do their part. I sure hope they will anyway. All right, assumption number four. Actually, number four, actually God uses our personal struggles and sufferings especially the longer-term ones we have in our life for our betterment. 
Now, I, I, I didn't understand this for a long time uh, until I took a deeper dive into Scripture, and this is what I found. James 1, starting at verse 2, says, and this is, it's just, it's, it's just so off the wall. It's like, th- it, this can't be true. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, James is writing this in his letter, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Why? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Isn't that awesome? And so, you know, and, it's, and, and how have I seen that in my life? Because I'm so old and three quarters dead, it seems like I've seen it a heck of a lot more the older I get. And the more that I can put my faith in God for him to be my peace, which surpasses all understanding and nothing else. And it's from of myself getting older. Someone asked me not long ago, Ron, what was your favorite, your, your favorite decade? I thought about that for a minute, and I said, the last one. Well, what do you mean the last one? You know, because, you know, I'm 64 years old, man. I, I can't believe I'm getting my Medicare card soon. I'm like, no way. I don't, I don't feel that old, at least what I thought 64 was. And, um, and I thought to myself, you know, the older I get, the more it's all about an audience of one, is what I call it. Who is that? God. It's God. It really doesn't matter what other people think. And, and someone said to me, well, you mean you, you, you wouldn't be back in your 30s or your 20s, you know, and you could climb mountains with more strength and all that? Because that would be cool. That would be great. But I've got more peace, and I know where my aim needs to be now than I ever have in my life. The older I get, the more I, I really enjoy just where I am. I don't want to be any other age. So... James says is that uh, it, our, our personal struggles and sufferings can give us that perseverance. Also, Romans 5, 3 and 4 says, uh, not only so, Paul says, but we also suffer in our sufferings. Glory, I'm sorry, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Persever- perseverance, character, character, hope. And so these are two of the the ones, two of the original apostles that say is that we can find more and more and more of that contentment, more and more of the gain by our sufferings. And what I found is by the people that I know and I've worked with for 25 years in my field, the people that have gone through the biggest sufferings are, are, are most times the biggest blessings as they get the perspective and put it on God. Audience of one, folks. That's what scripture says. So um, let me give you a couple of coaching tips before we go to questions. Um, uh, If somebody were to ask you, is the glass half full or half empty, what would you say? I said that too. And and then uh, it was... It was on the patio at our church one morning. This family that I know and, and uh, this little ankle biter uh, came running up to me. And he says, Ron, 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 Ron. And I said, yes, 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 yes. And, and I said, he says, is the glass half full or half empty? And I started to answer. I started thinking. The answer go, wrong. It's both. And then I started to think about it. That stinking little kid was right. It's both. We have a half full part. We have a half empty part. Which one should we focus on? What, what do you say? Both. Both. And I've always thought about, oh, it's been kind of a thought of myself as the half full, a fat, half, half full guy. And I thought, man, that is so true. And I somewhat focus on the half empty when I have to work on it, but I don't like to work on it. So I focus on the half full. But our responsibility before God is to focus on both. Um, think about Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. It exactly says this in the Greek. Have no anxiety about anything, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the promise is what? He'll guard our hearts and minds, and the peace which surpasses all understanding will be there. That's the promise. 
And think about that. And there, there is a great wisdom right underneath the surface of that verse. Have no anxiety about anything, but with, and, and let your request be made known to God with thanksgiving. Think about that. If we focus on thanksgiving, that's part of the half full, that we focus on the part that God is done and doing and will do in our life. Do you realize we live in three time zones concurrently? I'm not coming from outer space here on this one. We live in three time zones concurrently, past, present, and future. We can be in any one of those, and God's given us power to focus on any one of those time zones. And, and really, you know what Sabbath is based in? It's based in being present with what? With God. Being present is where we have the most power in our life. Being present. Being thankful reminds us of all three time zones. Well, at least the first two time zones, past and present. Being thankful says, thank you, God, for reminding where God has been in your past, which will build your perseverance and help you move forward in confidence in the present and not worry about the future. Does that make sense? Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. So let's, let's, uh, let's take a look here. We've got responsibilities on both parts of the glass, the half full and to work on the half empty part. What are things, give me, give me some things. What's in the half full glass, that, just from your own lives? What are things to be thankful for or what's in your half full glass? Shoot some ideas out here. Family, breathing, breathing. that's good. What's that? What's that, free time? Oh, clean time, right on. Yeah, what else? Community, Community. what else? Community. Yeah, okay, keep going. Relationship with God. Yeah, what else? Attending church. Attending church, what else? Children. Yeah, I, the list could go on and on and on and on. If we focus on that part, that will energize us. But now let's talk about the half empty part. If you have an issue with any kind of substance, Sobriety is something we need to seek. Uh, need to seek. That's hard work, very hard work. You go back far enough into my past, you're going to find a pornography problem. And what a dumb head I was, let me tell you. Try to do ministry without the Holy Spirit when you've got a we got a problem with something that affects you down to your core. Oh my gosh, that brought on anxiety. That brought on a panic attack. In the middle, by the way, I was seeing a client one day, and I was really tired. I had a little baby at home. Didn't feel like I, my wife was saying we didn't have enough money, and I was trying to work as much as I could. And so it was 9 o'clock one morning, and I'm starting to feel like, oh, my left arm's starting to hurt a little bit. And my client, who was sitting on the couch across, this is in the middle. I was the therapist, guys. I was the therapist at the time. And... Uh, the gal looks at me and says, you're looking a little white. Are you feeling okay, Ron? And I wasn't. And I said, excuse me a second. I tried to walk it off in the hallway. And the receptionist saw me. And it just saw that I, I was white as a ghost. And I said, no, I'm not feeling very good. And I said, but I'll be, o- I'll be okay. And I walked back in, start trying to do therapy. And uh, the gal across the room, she says, Where's the therapist's lounge? I'm going to go get you some lemonade or something. You need to lay down. She lays me down on, on the couch that she was sitting on. It is actually kind of funny. I started to laugh, and, I, and I, just, I just didn't feel good. And so I got taken to the hospital. They thought I was having a heart attack or stroke, and I started to think I was too. It was a panic attack because I wasn't managing my anxiety, which I wasn't managing my addiction. Does that make sense? I needed to stop and take care of the half-empty part and stop ignoring it. You know, what, what is that called? What's that called in recovery? Do you remember? Denial? Yeah, I was in denial. And um, I, I wasn't managing well. So um, uh, other, other things that, I mean, there's all kinds of things in the half empty. But here's the answer. Seeking after an intimate and ongoing relationship with Jesus and you want to ask yourself, we want to ask ourselves the question, how much time do I spend with Jesus on a daily basis? Praying without ceasing, wisdom from his word. Man, all this makes a huge difference. And also, if you're focusing on being the hands and feet of Jesus, the Holy Spirit works through us so we can help other people. Man, 
that can fill our tank, and that can fill more into the half full. We've always got to be looking at where sin is attacking us, what we've got to work on in our recovery programs and things. And uh, it's an ongoing process, isn't it? Ongoing process. So, uh, and the last thing I'll say before it's Q&A is that, and it's choosing faith over fear, folks. Faith over fear. And man, is there a boatload of fear? Just turn on the news if you want to know some fear. <laughs> you know? Just, just start watching any news, any news channel. I, I'm not sure what truth is out there anymore on the news. I think it's editorials. Because they, they say this, they say this. Man, I, I'll tell you what my answer is. is about 15 minutes with the LA Times and I read the headlines. And of course, I don't know how many of you are Dodger fans, but I'm looking for Dodger scores. And... Oh God! No, I'm not going to pray for the Dodgers. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go there. That's yeah. <laughs> so, faith over fear. Choose God. Focus on Him. All right. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, some uh, questions from you. Let's uh, let's go to some uh, question and answers, and I'll uh, pray for us in a minute. Questions? Do you might you have on this? Yeah. Well, I think it has to do with how much time do you spend with them. Is that's how I think about it. Um, I, now you're really going to think I'm crazy with this one. This is what I do on the way to work. Remember, I live in Corona. I drive the 91. It takes me as, not mu as much time to get <laughs> down the 91 from Maple to the 71 as it takes me to get 71 all the way out to San Dimas. <laughs> so it's a lot of, like it's sleep, and so. Um, I turned the radio off, and I asked Jesus to come sit in my passenger seat, and I have conversation with him. One thing I believe about time with God is, when I read church history, is that um, I think in the 21st century, there's so much emphasis on prayer and us talking with God and not listening to God. I take a large, a large piece of that commute time uh, to listen to God. And I usually always start off, not by design. I just start off by, thank you, God, for the beautiful hills. Thank you, God, for, you know, all kinds of things come to mind. And then, but I stop, and I spend about 10 minutes and just listen. And I just say, God, what do I need to be reminded of today? Now, I start off with a word every morning. Uh, and uh, it just depends. I do, I've done different things. One of the best resources that I found is, um, well, number one, um, if I'm sure you guys know about the Life Recovery Bible, yeah. that is so good. I took last year during the pandemic and went page by page through that. It was such a blessing, yeah. such a blessing. Um, the uh, uh, other thing I do, there's a, a book called um, uh, This Morning with God. It's put up by InterVarsity Press. I don't think it's in print, but you can find it on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. And it's a four-year study through the Bible. And it's, um, it's really not commentary. It's, they, 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 break, they break all the scripture up into, into small little like, like 15, 20 minute. Read this and then they ask you questions about observation, interpretation, application. And uh, it, it was a boatload of work to get through it. But now I just take like I'll go through Genesis and I'll do that for, you know, a month or so. So this morning with God's been really, really good too. So that, if I keep those two disciplines up and also have the wisdom to stop when I'm feeling anxiety and saying to stop and listen for a minute and take a deep breath, makes all the difference in the world. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Once my mind goes, I'm it'll it'll find its way past the rabbit hole into Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> you and me, brother. Yeah, I can I can easily do that too. A um, couple things. Uh, when people have uh, an issue with brain brain running off into distorted thinking and all that, first thing I say I tell people is take three deep breaths. And how I tell them to do it is. 
Breathe in through your nose. There's different ways to breathing. And if you, don't, if you breathe the wrong way, it's going to make you more anxious. And so your brain, one thing you need to understand is that um, uh, uh, feelings you cannot change directly. God did not give us an ability to change feelings. To say, change feelings? I don't know how that worked for any of you. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> but what does work is this, is to change. You can change feelings indirectly, including anger. And you change it by changing your thoughts or changing your behaviors. So um, one thing you can change in behavior is take those three deep breaths. That'll, that'll lower, I call it distress scale between zero and 10. Uh, zero being, you know, no distress whatsoever. And then 10 being really distressed. And so it'll drop a couple of points. And what I would encourage you to do is breathe in through your nose, put as much oxygen from... Um, uh, your your nose all the way down to your gut, and then let it out. Let it out slowly. It's going to look like this. Do that three times. It'll drop it probably a couple of points right there. And then ask yourself, what am I so angry about? Uh, I'll give you an example. I, I, you said the road, so I'll use road rage as a good one. You know, I, I'm sure everybody in the room, raise your hand if you get ticked off when someone cuts you off. Okay, well, I certainly do. And, and I can think about, oh, God, how dare you do that? You've disrespected me. What did you do that for me? That was a personal ass assault on me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know what the truth is? That the reality is, and, and, and the reality is, it could be any reason in the world. And I, I'm never going to know. So when I'm in my right mind, I say, after I get over, like, you just almost hit me, say, man, I can't believe they did that. They must be running off to a hospital. They must have someone that's dying of COVID right now. I'm going to pray for them right now. Because we're, we're just not going to know. My point being this is that we want to come out of distorted thinking to reality thinking. You know, if I'm having a bad day and I'm feeling like I have no control over my life and someone cuts me off and going, I can't believe they did that. You know, only one time in my life have I not done a, not done a smart thing. Uh, when someone cut me off one time was several years ago on the freeway on the 15 going south. And so uh, I, I went up and I wrote down their license plate number. And then I went up to their, by their window and I showed it to them. I have it and I'm going... Yeah, and I, I pulled off, you know, another 20 miles down. The guy followed me, and he comes, comes up behind me, and he hits my window so hard, I'm so surprised it didn't break. You know, if you want to get, you want to die, that's the way to do it, you know. <laughs> Goodness sakes. So, changing your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let it, let them go. We, we, we really don't know. It's coming back from... Um, Distorted thinking into reality thinking. That's a really big key. And if you ever work with a therapist, usually it's called cognitive behavioral therapy. We teach it here. You're, the crew that I supervise teaches it here. So you've got people right here, right in your backyard that can do that for you. Yeah. Other questions? What can I do to avoid a roller coaster in a business? Describe that a little bit for me. What do you mean? Uh, yeah, that's an e that it's not easy to do, and I, I have to remember I have the same problem. And it just depends on am, am I feeling up, am I feeling down. A lot of that has to do, did I get sleep last night? Um, did I come off of, of an argument with my wife? Did I, I mean, it just depends on life circumstances. And I find that um, if, I, if, I will, if I will stop and, be, and, and make sure I'm consistent in my time with God, that makes all the difference in the world. That helps me to have a realistic perspective. It's all about having a realistic perspective and not living off a feeling. And by the way, I'm an adrenaline addict. You know, I love roller coasters. I still do at 64. still love roller coasters and things. So I love all that stuff. So, um, but it's, it's bringing my, taking the deep breath, bringing myself down. That makes it, that's that, it's that being consistent. If, if I'm stable in the stuff that I'm doing and thinking, and especially my time with God, which is the peace which surpasses all understanding, that makes all the difference in the world. I know that was a very short answer, that was a very simplified answer, but that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. So, um, with your experience, what would you tell yourself 30 years ago? 
What would I tell myself 30 years ago? <laughs> you know my brain. You know, you know me well, don't you? I, I, that's normal. I, I would say I should have sought after a, a strong relationship with God back when I was 25. I should have been as serious about it then as I am now. And, if, and I should have sought after, here's the big thing I, I, I would say. It's that if I would have understood that my peace only is in Christ, and it's not in how good I'm doing with my wife or my kid or how many roller coasters I've gotten to go on or, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, it just, you know, did I win? I did triathlon for years. Did I, did I, did I do really well? Did I, you know, I, I never won a triathlon. Did I beat my time? You know, and I had better days and, you know, and, and let that, uh, you know, run my life. Yeah. You know, my peace is only in Christ. Yeah. And that is dependent. That, that may, has made my marriage better. It's made everything better in my life. And it stabilized me. Other questions? Uh, yeah. it's, it's, is it you thinking about the trauma from the past that drives it? Is that what you're saying? No, I think that trauma just creates habits that have been learned over the years. And trying to undo those habits is, is a challenge. Uh, obviously, all these are very simple, simplified answers tonight, so I apologize for that. Um, you, you know, when I, when I work with someone and I do assessment, I'm looking at um, where, where are they? I'm assessing all three time zones, past, present, future. And when I start working with people, regardless of what it is, I usually, well, it does matter, but I want to start in the present. Let's say someone comes in for some trauma of their past, and they've got a lot of anxiety problems now. I have to stable, we, we have to find a way to, where they, God has given them power to stabilize their anxiety now. And so, and if the past is invading the present, then that's why I became a trauma specialist, because I had to figure out how to go back here and help to resolve some of this so this doesn't invade here so you can have Sabbath. And being present with God, that's Sabbath in Scripture. And so I start in the present and then work through the past. But um, and what, what, I, what I tell our crew to do most times with that type of thing is um, uh, teach them um, affectual or emotional regulation by breathing, muscle relaxation, and then what I call going to a nice place on a mini vacation someplace that you've been before. For me, it's floating down the Snake River on a raft and right outside of Grand Teton National Park. And I'm there right now, and I'm really tranquil right now. I'm seeing a deer, I, man, I, and it's just, it's really nice being in that raft. And I'll tell you what, I, then I do, I, I ask Jesus to come in the boat with me and have some time with Jesus, the peace which surpasses all understanding. That usually works real good. But recognize that if your anxiety is too high, you're not going to have concentration. That won't work. But with practice, phew, I can be there really quick. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing I'll suggest real quickly is if when I, when I used to have an anger problem myself. And so when I got angry, I would put, when I was in my right mind, I would put on my running shorts, and I've been a runner my whole life, and I'd go out and run. The more anger I felt, or the higher the emotion, the faster I ran. You're regulating your body, your breath, your muscles. Your, it works extremely well. So that works really well. All right. Well, hey, let me pray for you all. God, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here with my brothers and sisters in Christ and God, I, uh, I pray for all of us, including myself, that, uh, man, all of us want that peace which surpasses all understanding. And it's all built upon how much time we spend with you, how much time we, we, we spend being transparent in our trust for you. And, and uh, God, a, a lot depends on our faith, too. We've got to put faith in, every, in, in, in everything we do. Even going up in an airplane, God, we have to have faith that that plane's not going to crash because planes crash. But if we, if we see that we, that we are willing to put our faith in you and get in that plane and go in your direction, that makes all the difference in the world. And God, that's where we experience your peace. And God, I pray for all of us too because a lot of my peace comes from doing what I'm doing right here, being a spokesman for you, being your hands and feet in everyone in this room. 
has an ability to be your hands and feet as that indwelling Holy Spirit is here with us and empowers us and does miracles through us. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name and all the people said, amen. amen. Thank you very much.